My name's Murray Wall, and I have not paid for electricity in over a year. This is a follow-up video to my last video about solar. You don't need to watch it in order to understand this video, but there's some great info in there, so you can check that one out too. A quick recap, I'm a realtor here in Lethbridge, Alberta, and in August 2022, I got a 7.2 kilowatt solar system installed on my home. My opinions are that of my own. I'm not affiliated with any solar companies. My only bias is that I invested $13,000 of my own money, so take that as you will. In this video, I'm gonna be going over what my payback period looks like, some sneaky life hacks that I learned while living with solar, and I'll also go through my production data month by month to help you get a better idea of what to expect in all four seasons. The first thing that I'm going to address is a correction from my previous video. It has to do with net metering. Most places in Canada do have net metering, but what I didn't realize is that not all net metering is created equally. And how it works in Alberta is different from other provinces. If you Google net metering in your province, you will find the most up-to-date and accurate information. How it currently works for me in Alberta is the excess energy that I produce gets paid back to me in cold hard cash. In the summer, I literally get a direct deposit into my bank account for the excess energy that I produce. I can use that money on whatever I want, including paying the admin fees on my bill, or I can even put it away and invest it in more real estate. It has come to my attention that it's not the same for other provinces, and it might even vary within your own province depending on your energy supplier. So what did I learn after installing solar on my home? One of the most important things to know when getting solar, of course, is how do you sell your electricity and pay off your system as fast as possible? The right utility company can make a big difference. The utility company that I use is Wholesale Power. They're a member of the UtilityNet network of energy marketers. There are over 30 different companies under the UtilityNet umbrella, and they all have the same rates. If you live in Alberta, and even if you don't have solar, I would consider checking them out because they might save you money, and you can cancel or switch at any time. All utility net companies in Alberta are part of the Solar Club, which allows you to buy and most importantly sell your electricity at a high rate during the summer when you're a net exporter of electricity, and during the winter you can switch to a low rate when you're a net importer of electricity. This can drastically lower your payback period for your solar system. I personally switch from high to low and low to high in October and March respectively. This is basically the only maintenance that I have to do, if you can even call it that. The other way to make money is to sell your renewable energy credits. I use Rewatt to sell my credits, and they estimate that I will get an additional $2,300 to $3,400 over the next 10 years just by doing so. The sign-up process was super easy, and they pay you a lump sum once per year. I have yet to actually get paid by them because I only signed up after learning about them when doing research for my first video. I'll pin a comment below once I receive my first check. Another thing that I learned is that my air conditioner by far uses the most energy in my home. So I'm very glad that my panels face slightly west because they produce energy late into the evening. Even in the summer, my home is pretty cool in the morning and I don't need to run my AC. The hottest hour of the day is usually between 4 to 5 p.m. So a sneaky hack that I learned was to program my thermostat to call for cooling slightly later in the day when my panels are producing the maximum amount of energy. I also have it set to cool my home down slightly more than I usually would. So by the time the sun sets, I no longer need to run it. It's kind of like a cold air battery of sorts. So I fill up my home with cold air using free energy that I'm producing from the sun, and then I have my AC to shut off through the night. That way I don't have to pull any energy from the grid to cool my home. Is this all a bit extra? Maybe. Does it save me more money than running it regularly? Absolutely, and here's why. If you've ever looked at your electricity bill, you will probably notice that the bulk of the bill is not actually the electricity that you use, it's the transmission and distribution fees. These fees are not actually fees at all. They're entirely variable and based upon your usage. So by not importing any electricity during the day when the sun is shining, you will not be paying any transmission and distribution fees. I know this is the case in Alberta, but I'm not sure how bills are calculated in other provinces. Let me know in the comments if it's similar in your province. Also, 
Air conditioning and solar go together like peanut butter and jelly, because when it's hot outside, chances are it's sunny, and when it's sunny, you can run your air conditioning to your heart's content without worrying about having a big bill at the end of the month. If you do not have AC or solar on your home, buy the AC unit first. In Alberta, if you want to take advantage of net metering, you are only allowed to install a solar system that is large enough to offset your yearly electricity usage, and no larger. So if you install the AC unit or buy an electric car after installing the system, you could have an undersized system. It will still work, but at the end of the year, you will not have a $0 electricity bill like myself. Before getting solar, I was thinking, what if I could disconnect from the grid and ditch the utility company completely? Even where I live in the second sunniest city in Canada, I don't think it would be worth it. Firstly, the cost would be a huge investment for the additional panels, a bigger inverter, and a buttload of batteries that I would need to store the extra energy. I'll be getting into my production numbers next, but there are stretches in the winter where I produced next to nothing for multiple days in the row. So I would love to hear from you if you've gone completely off grid here in Canada and how that's going for you. I had a lot of comments on my last video about if I have a battery or if I plan on getting a battery. The current answer is no. With net metering, you can basically use the grid as a battery, build up a credit in the summer, and use that credit in the winter without a huge upfront cost. However, that does mean that if the grid goes down, your power will shut off automatically as well. Where I live, my power grid is very stable. I can't even remember the last time we had an outage. If you have less stable power, or maybe you have an electric car that you would like to charge up overnight, it would probably make more sense. But for me, for now, I'm very happy with how net metering works. Speaking of my production numbers, let's take a look at how they stack up. First, the stats on my system. I have a five kilowatt solar inverter with 16 panels at 450 watts each, adding up to a total of 7.2 kilowatts for the entire system. It cost me $18,000 for the complete install, and I was able to claim the full $5,000 back from the Greener Homes grant, so it was only $13,000 out of pocket. Here is my total production for 2023. I produced 8.28 megawatt hours with an average of 690 kilowatt hours produced per month. Here we have the month of January, and you can see the production for each individual day. The best day produced 16 kilowatt hours and the worst day only produced 0.3 with a total of 268 for the month. February totaled 344 kilowatt hours, but you can see here there was nearly a week where I produced next to nothing. On to March, where I produced 724 for the month. You can clearly see we must have had a lot of snow at the start of the month. This is the month where I took advantage of the solar club and switched over to the higher rate about halfway through the month. You can only switch the rate once per month. On to April, 927 produced with a couple of cloudy days. May was pretty similar, but you can see as the days get longer how much more energy I produced with a total of 1,128 for the month. This is more kilowatt hours than I use in a month, especially because there were very few days, if any, that my AC was running. June takes the cake at 1,135, just barely edging out May with seven more kilowatt hours produced. June is actually on average the rainiest month where I live. Now onto July, where you might notice a serious lack of production in the middle of the month. This time, it was not because of snow on the panels. What happened was my solar stopped working for three and a half days before I checked my app on my phone and realized that it was not producing anything. I called up my installer and they were able to get a guy over to my house the same day to diagnose it. He literally flipped the switch off and then back on again and the system came back to life. At this point, we both thought that it was fixed, but three days later it went down again. They were able to come back out and it turns out that the shut off switch was faulty. My solar installer replaced it with a new one totally free of charge. That's why it's very important to go with a reliable installer. So for the month of July, I only ended up with 886 kilowatt hours. If I didn't have the outage in July, it most likely would have been the highest producing month. August, there was nothing special with 1,054 produced. September, 788. October, 391. Early in October is when I switched to the low rate for the winter. I've had solar actually for a bit over a year, so this was my second October with data. And in October, 2022, I produced nearly double at 656 kilowatt hours. I released a video recently on my channel where I talked about weather in Lethbridge and I stated that October is one of the most unpredictable months and this definitely proves my point. 
November nearly matched October at 386. And finally, we have December with 248 kilowatt hours. So what does my payback period look like? Well, it's not easy to calculate this because as I previously mentioned, in Alberta, if you have a fixed electricity rate, the transmission and distribution fees are always variable. And because I'm not paying them when my solar is producing electricity, it's hard to know exactly how much money I'm saving. Thankfully, I have an almost perfect comparison. I actually have a rental property that does not have solar on it and I have the electricity bills for the last year. Over 2023, the rental used on average 651 kilowatt hours per month and my solar produced on average 690 kilowatt hours per month. So pretty dang close. The total electricity bill for the rental was $1,740 for the year and my total bill at home was $0. So I saved at least $1,740. If you take the install cost of $13,000 and divide it by $1,740, that gives me a payback period of 7.47 years. This does not account for the additional savings that I should be making selling my renewable energy credits. So was it worth it? Time will definitely tell. Currently, it looks very promising for me. My panels should be paid off in seven and a half years, and they're also warranted for 25 years. So by that math, they should have paid for themselves three times over. Of course, it depends on the price of electricity, but I would be shocked to see if electricity prices drop in the coming years. It seems like a pretty good investment to me. The only thing that could have a better return is probably real estate. If you have any further questions, leave me a comment. And if you want to move to the second sunniest place in Canada, hit me up. My details are in the description down below.